we should be good to go. Welcome to this presentation about juggling. So there are infinitely many different ways that we can juggle, uh, different uh, tricks, different patterns, different throws, and different catches. Whoops. And just like uh, in music notation, we can write down music on paper using music notation. Uh, we can write down dance on paper using dance notation. We can also write down juggling on paper using a juggling notation. And this happens to be the topic of today's presentation, uh, the presentation of my thesis, which is titled Tricky Throws and Pretty Patterns. Ooh, it's shaking. <laughs> Improving upon 40 years of juggling notation. And I'm going to guide you through this uh, title backwards, starting with one of my favorite topics, which is uh, me. So my name is Daniel, and as uh, all of you here know, um, I am a professional juggler and I have a bachelor's degree in circus arts. And for a very long time I've had a fascination about juggling notation. In fact, I managed to find some forum posts that I wrote over seven years ago where I already expressed my desires to one day uh, devise my own juggling notation system. But this begs the question, um, why would somebody want to notate juggling in the first place? And why did I think that a new notation system was needed. To be able to answer that question, I would like to uh, give you a short overview of 40 years of juggling uh, notation history. So, uh, SiteSwap. SiteSwap is uh, one of the oldest and certainly the most important juggling notation system that jugglers use. It was in discovered about 40 years ago, and it's this very elegant mathematical system that describes the order in which uh, juggling props are handled. You can imagine if I throw something very high, it will be handled again sometime later, whereas if I throw something very low, it will be handled again much sooner. And these disorders are expressed with numbers. Um, we uh, call uh, this throw typically a three, we call this a four, we call a little bit higher throw a five, and so on and so forth. And then we create tricks by adding uh, the numbers in a row together to create short strings, such as uh, 441, you see on the screen, that represents this trick. And usually these are quite short strings that repeat themselves. Not every string of numbers uh, creates a valid pattern that's actually jugglable, that makes sense. So to help us find patterns that make sense, we can use uh, juggling generators. This is a trick generator. We ask the computer uh, for a pattern with four balls and uh, let's say a maximum height of uh, height seven and then the pattern repeats itself after three throws. And then out comes a list of possible juggling patterns. And we can even select one of those patterns and throw it into a juggling simulator to see what it would look like in real life without having to juggle it ourselves. And this kind of workflow of uh, creating tricks through generators has really changed the way that we juggle. In fact, uh, many jugglers think that SideShop is uh, one of the uh, key components in this uh, uh, renaissance of trick uh, invention that we're currently going through. So SideShop is pretty great all in all, but it also has some severe limitations. For example, um, SideShop can only describe the order of tricks, but not the type of throws that they are made. For example, you can make throws over your head or uh, under your arm, but SiteUp is not able to describe any of those things, although this is very important for juggling. So um, a lot of other juggling notation systems have been devised in the past 40 years to try and fill this gap. These are just a few that I described in my paper. Um, I tried to categorize them by the different features that they've all shown. They all, uh, some of them are very uh, comprehensive and try to describe everything that you can do in juggling, like SOYUP system, but also some are very specific that only describe, for example, the notation, the rotation of objects and the orientation, like the rotation, nation, notation system. That's a really word you can stumble over, rotation, notation, system. Um, in sp uh, mostly systems, they sadly are not uh, used a lot. Um, there are also not many generators or simulators for these. Um, some have very limited uses. For example, there are also notations that only describe whether your hands are crossed or uncrossed, and um, some of them are quite arbitrary, where one notation can describe multiple different juggling tricks. So inspired by these uh, 25 notations that I found and looking at the limitations, I asked myself if I could do better, and that is to come up with a comprehensive system that describes most of juggling in a way that doesn't have these issues. Um, particularly, I set myself two goals. The first being that I wanted to be able to describe tricks that evolve the body, so one thing going around the body that you can describe patterns that go around, and also with the body that you can catch with not just your hands, but that you can describe catches with 
your shoulders or your elbows or your knees, etc. And then the other goal was for the system to be suitable for trick simulation and generation. Um, my ideas about this notation system evolved into two separate notation systems that can be combined to describe juggling in total. One system to be able to describe tricky throws and one system to be able to describe pretty patterns. And I would like to discuss the pretty patterns first. My notation system to describe uh, patterns is called rhythmic catches. It is a beat-based system, uh, unlike sites of which is event-based, and the beats are defined as the sound of catching a ball, because this is what you actually hear what you, when you juggle, and this is an easy reference point. It's uh, numerical, just like a side swap before, so you assign a number to a throw, and in this case a one represents a ball that stays in the air for one count, so one, 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 or two is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There's no notation yet for drops. The dashes that are on screen are to describe a beat in which no throw is happening, so that way you know that the the whole pattern takes three beats before it repeats itself with a throw. And this kind of uh, beat-based system turned out to be required to be able to describe patterns that involve other body parts. Uh, but also it allowed for new tricks. Uh, it allowed for uh, rhythmical patterns, such as this galloping. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, which is not possible to describe with many other notation systems. Um, there's some modifiers you can add to these numbers, so these numbers form the basis, but then you can add something to it, like an S for a straight throw that stays on the same side of the body. You can add brackets to define that you want to throw multiple balls at the same time. Uh, you can add a plus to uh, educate a hit or a bounce instead of a catch. There's, uh, you can use abbreviations like E for elbow to define that you want to throw to or from an elbow catch, and there's a bunch more of these abbreviations. And together then we can describe throws or tricks like this. This is a trick juggled by Kuta, which involves juggling with the elbows, and we can describe it with this juggling notation. So, so much for rhythmic catches. Then we also have the tricky throws part, which is a system, um, well, before I could answer how I wanted to solve tricky throws, um, I realized that a question about what is a juggling trick, and especially which qualities of juggling matter, and which qualities should I write about. Um, for example, is a narrow throw, a small throw, is that the same kind of throw as a, a wide throw? In many situations, if I ask a juggler uh, if this trick, which they call a juggling cascade, is the same trick as this trick, they say, yeah, it's still called a cascade. It doesn't matter if you throw small or wide, but when my hands keep on moving in the direction they cross over, you get a different trick, a crossed arm cascade. And it was up to me to figure out these unwritten rules of which uh, features of juggling define tricks or don't. Well, this turned out to be a very difficult task, so rather than starting from scratch, I decided to build my own systems upon the ideas of another system, a system called body trick notation. Body trick notation was invented around 2001 by a juggler, Denis Pamier, who's listening to us on Zoom, so I hope that I do a good job at representing his uh, system. But I want to explain it very short. You take a model of a juggler, and then you imagine five holes around the juggler between the various limbs. You can assign these holes labels such as one to five and now a body throw becomes a throw that goes into one hole and out of another hole and that way you know that it goes around a body part for example um, if you say three five this is a throw that goes into hole three comes out of hole five and forms this under the leg throw which is a really nice model but it has uh, one problem uh, to me it's in some sense ambiguous um, jugglers tend to differentiate between uh, throws that go uh, that are being thrown under the leg or throws that are caught on the leg. These are two different tricks in juggling worlds, but both of them follow the same pattern going into hole three and out of hole five. So to solve that, I introduced my own system, improved body trick notation, or I often shorten it to IMBO. And one of the first things I did is I renamed the holes to H, M, and L, uh, which stand for high, middle, and low, or head, midriff, and legs, whichever you prefer. But more importantly, I added notation to be able to describe when a throw is being made. For example, um, if I want to do an under the leg throw, the ball first passes through the middle hole, then it gets thrown, then it goes through the leg hole, and then it gets caught. Or, alternatively, if you do an under the leg catch, it first gets thrown, and then it gets uh, goes through the hole, then it gets caught, and then it gets pulled through the leg hole. The change in this order means the difference between these two tricks. 
And then another smaller modification, I added some kind of, uh, I allow for the use of modifiers. There are some tricks, like for example, the shoulder catch and this penguin catch, where the ball passed through the same holes, but jugglers seem to think of these as different tricks. So to be able to allow for this distinction, you can add a modifier, in this case, the modifier P for penguin, to specify that you want the juggler to go through this penguin catch position. And I allow users of the system to also come up with their own modifiers to allow for uh, infinite possibilities to be able to describe different body throw positions. So that summarizes my system's rhythmic catches and imbo. Um, you can have a lecture about this for two hours. I still probably wouldn't have shared everything there's to tell about these. So if you want to know more of the, about this, I invite you to read my thesis. But what I want to know and discuss with you right now is are those systems any good? Are they better than what existed? And to try and evaluate this, I had two different methods in mind. The first being that I wanted to compare these systems with existing notation systems. And um, the way I tried to do that was by using a standard list of tricks. I wanted to notate a bunch of tricks in both other systems and in my systems. But my first problem was that I couldn't find such a list of standard juggling tricks. I tried to look in books, but books tend to have hundreds of tricks and there would be way too many for me to notate and compare. And I tried to look in videos, but videos often were about a very specific subcategory of tricks, whereas I want to have a more generic set of tricks. So I opted to make my own list together with help from Owen Reynolds. Is the video starting? Yes, brilliant. Together with help from Owen, my supervisor, we uh, created a list and narrowed it down to 22 different jutting tricks that you can all do with three balls. And we believe these tricks to be quite well known among most jugglers. Um, and also all these tricks had unique features that were not featured in already the other tricks. So um, we think that with these 22 tricks, we can make a quite well representation and map the capabilities of what different notation systems can do. And this is a video, uh, I'm not gonna show it for too long. Let's move on to the next, yes. So I had 22 tricks and then I wanted to notate them in eight different notation systems. I am not an expert in all of these systems. So for the system of beatmap, I got help to notate this with the, from the beatmap author, Luke Burge. And then the system harmonic throws, all the harmonic throw notations were done by the author of harmonic throws, Jonathan Ladier. He did them for me, so thank you for that. Um, and then I had for each of these tricks, so this is fake mess, one of the tricks in the list, I had these eight different notations. That means in total I had 176 notations that I needed to somehow compare with each other. The way that I did that was by uh, taking a feature of such a trick. For example, with a fake mess, I took the carry path. Sometimes I took one, sometimes I took two. Defining features of the trick that were unique to the other tricks. And I would score each notation system whether they would be able to uh, describe this feature or not. I didn't do this for each notation system individually. Some of them I combined. For example, we already know that sides up can't do the throws and body trick notation can't do the, the pattern, the height of the balls. So I combined those two together. And similarly, I combined side stop and those mass notation. And I also combined the rhythmic catches and imbo because they were intended to be together. But beat map, so you and harmonic throws were able to stand on their own as their kind of comprehensive systems on their own. And then I gave a zero points to a system if it could not describe the feature at all, one point if it could partially describe it, two if it could fully describe it, and in very rare cases, the uh, system got three points if I thought that it would describe it better in a meaningful way than the other systems already did. Before I share the results of uh, how these scores add up, I would like to remind you that this is a method that I improvised, it was not there before, and it was filled in by a biased researcher, me, who wanted my own systems to succeed in some kind of way. And uh, to make matters worse, I used a list of tricks that I also devised myself. So the number that rolls out of this is very far from a scientific fact, but I still think it can give some kind of insight in the features that these systems supported or not. And then what rolls out is that uh, rhythmic catches uh, got a score of 45, harmonic throws is a close second with 41, and then the other systems are a bit further down below. So to me, this gives a suggestion that rhythmic catches and imbo together are able to support a lot of different features. Another thing that I wanted to do with this comparison is to compare how elegant these systems could describe these throws. I believe that the, the easier a system is to read and write, the easier it is to be used. And for example, there's a trick called monkey juggling. In beat map, you need this four by four grid to be able to describe the trick. In harmonic throws, you need a little diagram of the under the armpit position and then six markers on the staff to be able to describe the trick. 
in rhythmic catches, you don't need any info for this, in rhythmic catches, you only need this line to be able to describe this trick, and I think this is a lot easier to read and write and understand for those who are trained in the system. The second way of evaluating these, uh, my systems would be to uh, compare, uh, to write them in more exotic tricks. We now know it works with these generic tricks, these tricks that everybody knows, but I wanted to be able to find more interesting tricks and therefore I needed more interesting trick sources. But where does one find a list of, uh, preferably unbiased list of exotic juggling tricks? There are so many on the internet. So I decided to look in a list called the Top 40 Jugglers. This is a popularity contest where hundreds of jugglers vote on their favorite juggler. And from this, I narrowed it down to just the top 10 jugglers. I picked only those who juggle balls, so that we narrowed it down to five jugglers. From this, I looked at their very latest ball juggling video. And then in the latest ball juggling video, I looked for repeating patterns only. And then in these repeating patterns, I narrowed it down to patterns with only three or four balls. And then from those, I looked in ones that have unique features that were not already featured in the other tricks. And that narrowed it down to a manageable list of 13 tricks that I could try and notate. These are just four of the examples. And luckily all the five jugglers that I notated, they gave me kindly permission to use their tricks in my thesis. So these four tricks I notated in Rhythmic Catch and Inbo, and I also did for the other, uh, how many is there? Nine. <laughs> So uh, some of them only needed rhythmic catches to be able to describe them, like the first, but most use a combination of rhythmic catches and imbo to be able to describe them. Out of the 13 tricks, I was able to fully describe uh, nine of them, and four of them I could only partially describe. So not all of them I could fully describe, but even the ones I could fully describe, you can possibly debate about this. For example, um, a juggler might say, uh, who invents a trick, they might say that the movement of their head is an essential part of a trick, and my systems don't describe this. So it's kind of, it's always the debate what defines a trick before you can fully say that you can describe it or not. But I believe with my general knowledge that these systems are good enough to describe uh, these tricks. So to conclude, um, rhythmic catches and inbo describe most features of juggling. They are quite elegant in doing so. They can describe tricks around the body and tricks with the body, catching with the shoulders like was one of our goals. But then we have this other goal, um, generation and simulation. I think the best way to prove that the system is suitable for generation simulation and for handling with software is to actually write that software. This is a Juggling Lab, it's an open source software and together with my co-student Ilse Arward, we tried to modify the system to allow it to read uh, my notation systems and be able to execute throws from that. So Ilse got as far as to add legs to a juggler who had been legless for already over 25 years. But in the process of trying to animate these legs and trying to make it do throws and catches with the feet, we realized that it was uh, too much of a laborious project, that the existing code was too complicated for us to continue, so we sadly had to give up on that. And then the question remains, can I still prove then that my system is suitable for this? I would say as far as possible, yes. I tried to keep this in the back of my mind all through the process of designing these systems. The systems are text-based, which is very useful if you want to be able to enter it in computer software and they have uh, logical rules and very little exceptions and very little ambiguities as much as possible, at least as far as I can judge through my understanding of this system and other systems that I came across. Um, but we still would like to see a generator and simulator in the future, which brings me to future research. Obviously, the generator simulator. I think that could be somebody's uh, master thesis for years to come. But also what would be really interesting would be to do some kind of usability study. Uh, right now, the only person to ever have used these systems is uh, me, I did a little workshop with Robert who is in the room, but uh, he got a little insight, but not in detail. I think a usability study could help uh, to figure out uh, how other jugglers uh, treat it and what they learn from it and how they work with it, and that could help with information how to improve these systems in the future. And one particular improvement that I'd like to see is uh, some kind of notation that fits with rhythmic catch and inbo that can describe the orientation of props. Right now, you can describe juggling balls because the orientation does not matter. They always stay the same shape. But when you juggle clubs or rings or something like this bottle, the orientation of props often matters in juggling tricks. So if you can add this notation, then it would be useful to many more uh, jugglers, for example, those who juggle balls and clubs. Before I finish the presentation, I want to share a little anecdote. Whilst I was working on this research, I was approached uh, and asked to substitute for a juggler in a juggling show. And I had to learn a lot of juggling material in very little time. And I decided to write out the complete show in an early version of written catches. That's what you see on the left here. And on the right is uh, us in this performance in a museum. 
And uh, it took a little bit of effort to write down uh, this whole show. It also made me learn a lot about my system. But more importantly, during the rehearsals, um, it was super, super useful. I didn't need to scroll through video all the time to try and find my bit. Also, the jugglers I was working with, they didn't always know beat for beat exactly what I was doing, but I could look it up in my score. And by writing it down, the structure of the whole show became very apparent to me, which made it much easier to remember the whole show. I think that writing it down uh, contributed to me being able to learn it so fast. I wouldn't have been able to do it without the notation. So whatever happens to these systems in the future, I will definitely be using them because I already found my personal use case. That brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for listening and uh, yes?